Let us pray. Indeed, God, you are good. Father, we thank you for this day. There is none like you. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for any situation that anyone might be in. Lord, we just say thank you. And Father, we know you are walking us through every step, Lord, and that you've allowed it. Be it hearts and pains that we are undergoing through, Lord, you've allowed them. We thank you, Lord. Feel us, O oh God, even as we want to hear of your word, Lord. Renew us, may it bring refreshing Jehovah into our spirits. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. We are in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Adam lay with his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I brought forth a man. So, Adam at this time has intercourse with the wife and then we see the first child, which was Cain. And now, as we go through the Bible, we have to realize something that every name in the Bible, every name that is used in the Bible, they always have a meaning. And you'll find that all the meanings always impact. They, they really uh, like affect the situation or they, they explain the situation that uh, the kind of the name is portrayed. Where the name is portrayed, it always has a meaning that further explains the event of that uh, current place. Now, Adam and uh, Eve, they had intercourse and gave birth to a son named Cain. Now, and then she said, that is Eve, with the help of the Lord, I brought forth a man. Now, that, that, that man, in Hebrew, it renders this, uh, that I've gotten. So Cain always means gotten. Like she said, I've gotten a man. So where she explains it, that uh, the Lord has helped me bring forth a man. If at this point, we remember the previous chapter, that was chapter 3, verse 15, where the, there was a curse being pronounced on the on Eve, Adam, and the, the serpent. In verse 15, God pronounces a curse upon the serpent, and he says that, that the woman will bring forth a seed, and the seed will, will trample, will crush your head. And this serpent will bruise it. Now, Eve knew this was the seed. This was the child that was promised. But we, we, we learned and realized that was the Messiah. So Eve knew this was the Savior. King was the Savior, was to trample on the head and to crush that snake. That's why in the rendering, how she explains it and says it is, uh, God has given me the man, that man. So Cain means gotten. At the back of the mind, she knew this was the Messiah. Later, in God's goodness and all that, as they were growing and all the events that occurred, she knew again it wasn't that man that had been promised. So Cain means gotten. So she was explaining it like, I've gotten a man, even the Lord. I've gotten a man, even the Lord. So she knew this was the man, the Messiah who was to save her. And then from that, uh, the, the panic of the sin on their fallen state, but behold, Cain wasn't the Messiah or the promised one or the Lord. So uh, verse 2 says, later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. So Abel means vanity. 
vanity. So from Abel, we can learn that God now, uh, the woman, sorry, Eve now realizes this first son is not the Lord, whom I thought. Now, it's all vanity. It's all vanity. Like, no hope. Then she named the second one vanity. Because she knew, indeed, this is not the one I thought. This is just a man, a mere, a mere human being. So the second one was Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked on the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from the firstborn of his livestock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and of his offering but on cain his offering he did not look with favor so cain was very angry and his face was downcast now these two brothers grows up and uh, cain tended the land he was he was like a farmer a farmer a farmer land mostly uh, he could grow crops and all that and uh, abel tended the livestock he kept livestock. So it reaches a point when now they were to bring sacrifice to the Lord because man is now in the fallen state and uh, the fallen state that needed to be sacrificed, sacrificed to put people right with the Lord, like to stand, to stand in between man and God. You see, as you've said, as you walk through Genesis, until we will reach uh, the New Testament, God willing, we will be seeing Christ Jesus portrayed in these stories that uh, we will be going through in the Old Testament. Now we see Jesus Christ is always the Lamb. The Lamb who was offered to the whole of the world, Jesus Christ. is that ultimate Lamb that anyone who believes in Him doesn't perish and is put right with the Lord is the only lamb right now that anyone has to accept because it was offered to the to the Lord and God accepted him. It was sinless and God accepted him. And now God gives us a way to approach him through the lamb that is Jesus Christ. Now because there was sin and we have a holy God in between the needed to be sacrificed to to join to join us to the lord now cain and abel they are now to offer their sacrifice to the lord and uh, the two here's the thing these two offers differently to the lord in the eyes of men we could see cain tending the land and abel bringing now the livestock the livestock is bloody when he brings it and offers it to the lord and cain works out the land and brings what he has worked out of his sweat and is like he's doing a hard work and bringing it to the lord we can see in the man's eye that cain is working extra to bring a, a great offering to the lord and Abel is just bringing the livestock and killing it, something that is living and killing it. But he could find something instead, like a crop or a plant to bring to the Lord, just to cater for that. But we find God accepts Abel, that lamb, more than Cain. He rejects Cain and accepts Abel's. Why? Because as see we've said, everything the Lord says or is portrayed here reflects to Jesus Christ. God wanted a picture of Christ to be painted here that when we bring the livestock, the lamb, it should represent Christ who is the ultimate one. And no other thing in our struggles like Cain brings his, his uh, which is the um, 
plants, God doesn't accept it. He accepts Abel's that portrays directly to Christ, the lamb, and it portrays uh, Jesus Christ. You see, when a sacrifice is being offered, it should always ring something to the one offering it. The one that is slaying the lamb, when he slays the lamb, it should remind you that sin does this. It leads to the death. Death, someone has to die. Something has to die for you to be put right with God. Anytime we sin, something has to die for us to be put right with God. Now, it should show us that seriousness that sin leads to death. So when you are offering the, the lamb, when you are cutting the throat, it was to remind them that Abel, this is what sin leads to. And you can always stay out of sin to avoid death of a lamb. And that is the same way when we too, in this generation, when we approach God, we go in the basis of Christ. He, he died and he rose again. And we know what sin does, that he led even Christ, Messiah, to the cross. That it is serious. That when we want to commit any kind of sin, we should remember how serious it is. So that is what sacrifice does on one end. And then the Lord, when we go on that basis to approach the Lord that he did this to Christ, and now, Lord, we understand it, then the Lord accepts it as Abel's, that now you can understand what sin does. And yes, the lamb has been sacrificed. And yes, now there is remission. You see, in the New Testament, God says, uh, through faith, through faith, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it says that through faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. Through faith. And in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, right around verse 17, it says that faith comes by hearing. So it means God had already spoken it to them that he should offer a lamb. God had spoken it. Because faith, we see Abel offered this sacrifice through faith. And faith that doesn't just come out of us like that. There must be a hearing of God's word. And then it builds faith in us. So God had already spoken it somewhere to them. But this is what she should bring. And uh, Cain never got rid of that. He went an extra mile to do, to bring something out of his sweat. And thought God could acknowledge it better. But you find God rejected it. And that's why our struggles to be put right with the Lord. Is not much fasting or helping people a lot or anything, going to church a lot or singing a lot or doing. You see, being put right with the Lord is not a matter of anything of such, but it's just a simple thing, accepting what the Lord says, obedience. The Lord says, this is the sacrifice. Accept Jesus Christ. Simple. Nothing else and nothing more. And then you find by doing that simple thing, like the cross, accepting the cross, it is foolishness. The wise, the wise sees it, the world sees it as foolishness. But that foolishness is what now puts us right with the Lord. It's so simple. Salvation is so simple. That being put right with the Lord. Offering a sacrifice, sacrifice that puts us right with the Lord is so simple. Just accepting Jesus Christ. He's not trying to do something extra to be put right with the Lord. So we see that from that story. Amen. Uh, verse 6 says, Then the Lord said, Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Now, in verse 5, we saw so Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now, it can explain. Now, Cain became angry when God rejected this offering. And he, uh, he was depressed. That he was downcast in spirit. He was depressed. Cain, 
when we struggle a lot to achieve God's acceptance, when we struggle by doing these things, but we try to make ourselves right with the Lord, you, you find it reaches a point when the Lord rejects and he realizes it just by default. And that will bring you into a point where now you are not that high. You'll find you are depressed and there is anger that will be built. There is a depression that comes in. And now, as Cain, we see depression now comes in. In the Bible, this is the first place where we see depression. It was out of being disobedient of what God, God required. Out of a sin. So depression comes in in, in Cain. And now God asks in 6. And then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Or why are you downcast in spirit? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, you will be accepted. Or some Bible uh, version renders it. If you do what is right, you will have a smile in your face. If you do what is right, you will smile. You will be accepted. But if you do if you do not do what is right, sin crouches at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. The Lord says to Cain, You've done what is wrong. And I've rejected it. And that is not the end. You can put it right. You can go and and rectify this place. But we find Cain at this point now is depressed. Now, uh, let's talk about this a bit, depression. You find God tells Cain directly, this is what is happening. You've done what is wrong and you are depressed, but you can make it right by going back to what made you uh, from the beginning, what made you feel depressed? Just go and rectify it. And you find you love a smile on your face. It's so simple. You see, most of us always go under depression. And most of us deal with depression so differently. That is so fatal at the end. You find some of us are so much depressed. And what they do is, if they were Christians or not, they just try to uh, neglect themselves. They enclose themselves in one place and try to reject everyone around them and deal with it by themselves. Some could download a number of series, movies, to watch 24-7 just to forget about that, that, that feeling they have of depression. Some could take tours. Some, you see, people are, some could smoke or drink or just to find that kind of peace for a while. But here's the thing. You and me, we've realized that that doesn't always solve depression. Depression is solved simply by going to the root cause. What causes it? What caused it in your life? And now you, you handle it from that simple fact. It's not by movies, more movies, or much uh, uh, drawing away from people or leaving the church. But you find the best way is always find, find, find some people. And if you're a Christian, find believers and begin sharing. Just share, share simple stories. You'll find there is kind of peace that comes. And after that, handle it to the root. Approach it from the root. You can hide, you can run from depression, but you find it always catches up with you. It goes slow behind you when you run, but any point you rest and you think it's all done, it will always come back. And hit you again. So let us solve depression. Let us not be enclosed in places. Don't smoke a lot or drink much or watch movies much to overcome it. It's simple. 
Just go to the Lord in prayer. Find brothers and sisters who knows the word or who can encourage you. And begin encouraging one another. You find it always lift you out of that. Because when you are depressed, the enemy always is always with you. Just as uh, he came to uh, uh, Eve. The enemy at that point will always tell you how God is always not really on your side. Now God is unfair. And now God is not working anything in your life. And now that those men of God are just speaking things that you've heard several times and they can't understand it. The enemy will always just bring you to go against the men of God because he knows it. When such men or when you hear scripture or when someone comes and talks to you, the scriptures when you're depressed, you'll always find some relief. It's true, it's true. It works. But let us handle it from the root. If it is unforgiveness that you hold, there are demons that always come. When people are always angry, there's some demons that always gets into people. You not just be good, a, a Christian, but you can always be demonized. With such demons of anger. And you find depression creeps in. And just, just so much angry with someone. And you find as days goes by, it increases. Depression increases, the anger increases. People, so simple. If it's that, forgive, forgive. And you'll find the burden lifted. In a simple way, it's, it works so foolishly. Many of us are so much depressed because of some things people did to us. An ex, we had an ex. What? It, just forgive and collect back your life and move on. It works. In such a foolish manner that I'm just saying it, you'll find that depression is lifted and to anyone undergoing depression may the lord and his goodness may the lord just fill you with peace that surpasses all human understanding and you'll come you'll come you'll grow out of it just approach it and handle it from the root in jesus name now cain said to his brother Uh, let's notice verse 7 it says it desires to have you now that is sin as God is now speaking to Cain uh, let me just read it all. verse 7 says if you do what is right will you not be accepted but if you do what is but if you do not do what is right sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you but you must master it sin is crawling at your door like the scripture that says, watch out your enemy, the devil. He comes like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Be alert. And notice when depression wants to come in to your life. Just notice it and realize it's like the enemy. Not like, it's the enemy waiting for you when you're not aware. And he comes in your life and he masters you. But the word says, God tells him, watch out that it doesn't get in you. And you should master it. Know how to handle it. If it's heart and pain, this one did me this. Forgive it before it grows so big. You have to master your life. Any kind of thing that causes depression or the downcast in spirit, what takes your joy? You see, there are some people who the enemy just places strategically in your life, that this day he wakes up so much happy. And when you just meet them, or when they text you, it changes everything. Daily, the enemy just places them in your life. That is, um, they, they swing your mood. They, they, are, they are to just tamper with your mood. When it's high, the enemy tells them, gives them a call, and says, now, can you handle this? And you find that there are some kind of people who will always, every day, or more oftenly, just tamper with your mood. 
learn to master. Be wise. Master. Avoid such. And when you can interact with them, always know this is the enemy working through this brother or sister. But I won't allow him or her to change my mood. Try to master. God will give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Now, Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. You see depression now in this point. It doesn't just stop from there. It leads to death. It always grow people. To... Most people who commit suicide, they are not just always suicidal, even in the first sight. But you find it grows to be something else. So people handle. Anyone who is depressed... Approach it before it goes further. So Cain kills his brother in this point. And then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I do not know. He replied, Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me in the ground. Now you are under curse and driven from the ground. Which of Sorry. Now you are under curse and driven from the ground, which opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you walk the ground, it will no longer yield its crop. You will be restless, wanderer on the earth. Depression grows to uh, a point where now you become restless. The peace. You will no longer understand what peace is. But here's the thing, people. God stands at the door and he knocks. When you let him in, he'll come and dine with you. And he'll rest. And he'll eat. Not thinking of the enemy coming to, to, to take something. On. You'll just enjoy the Lord. Most of people, if not Christians, they just need the Lord. They just need to accept salvation for them, for things, Lord, to come in their life and begin turning things, tables around in their lives. What the enemy has taken, those territories that the Lord begin working on them, people. The Lord can fulfill you and give you peace in all direction. That is the truth. That is the truth. It's all about Christ. It's all about God. It's all about God. Man. Now, uh, verse 12 said, when, uh, verse 13, can you say to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today, you have driven me out of the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one so that no one who found him will kill him. He is the grace of the Lord. Even after Cain had faulted, the Lord asks him, Where is your brother? Now Cain the response is, uh, you see, if he, the Lord could have been man, he could have just killed Cain from that spot. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord knew he has killed his brother. You see, people, know that the Lord never knew what had happened. And that's why at times God comes in your mind, in your heart and just to speak to you of something, issue in your life. And it's not about it's not a matter of the Lord is inquiring to know. But at times he just want to in, in, involve in a dialogue that you can see it through. Where I have gone wrong and this is how I should rectify it. And that is so sweet to speak to the Lord. It's good to speak to the Lord. You see, in your personal time, when you pray, don't work or don't pray as Pharisees. Don't look for great words 
to speak to the Lord or to change your voice to make it sound more holy. The Lord, make God your father. Understand that that other side of the Lord, there is a father. And how you could speak to your father, you don't go to your father changing your voice to make it sound that you're more serious or... or just make it a, a, a friendly talk. I don't speak things out to the Lord. Just speak them. And you find in that speaking, it brings insight in you. It doesn't speak to you that, yes, we live, this is what we, But it speaks in your heart. Oh, through a scripture, or, but it will speak to you. At times, just pour out yourself to the Lord. When you're feeling depressed, don't pray, Lord, thank you so much. I'm so happy, Lord, and I thank you so much for this day. At times, pray, Lord, I feel I'm so much depressed, and Lord, can you walk me through this? Pour out your heart to the Lord. Just as David did, he could always speak his heart to the Lord. And the Lord loves it when you just come and interact with him at that face. So God never asked this so that Cain, so that he could uh, become aware of oh, who killed who killed this man, who, who, killed, who killed Abel. But it was just for that interaction. That is what the Lord loves. So in your personal time, always find this time, just speak to the Lord. And that's why you find so many people, the people don't pray. Because they see it as a, an obligation, a task. I have to pray when I'm going to sleep. And what will I say today? Make it so simple. Just speak one on one as you're speaking. Take it. The Lord is here and is sitting beside me. And now I'm talking to him. You find with that mentality, prayer becomes more uh, personalized and it grows. Man. Now, uh, but the Lord was so much patient and uh, so much, you see, God is always so much, he has mercy. Anytime he judges us, we see mercy. We saw mercy when he was punishing, uh, pronouncing the curse upon uh, Adam and Eve. We see his mercy right now again. He says, no one will kill you. No one will kill you. I'll protect you by giving you this stamp this seal people christians we are all broken people no one is perfect however you may sing to people however you may try to beautify yourself by your walking right with the lord you are never complete that is a fact we are all broken and in that state, let us understand that even those people who have not still yet accepted Christ, we approach them in truth, truth, telling them the truth about Christ and all that. But again, with mercy, that we all answer also in that state they are in. Let us approach people with mercy. And even if anyone has seen a Christian, let us not always take it as if it was to be complete and all that. God understand your dust and let us understand people are dust and always try to bring people back as the word says that when someone sins, let us try to bring them back with mercy, hold them with mercy so that they should not break further, but try to hold them back, show them the love of God. The tongue breaks bone when the answer is soft when we speak to people softly and all that it embraces a feature in christ let us approach people with truth but also with love love is the key love is the king so god has mercy he had mercy on cain so as to let us always approach people if you are wronged by someone approach them with mercy have mercy context in you as the father does it so um suffered so king verse 16 says so king went out 
from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Oh, let us notice the flow. First, there is uh, going against God's will. That is, Cain offers what never pleased God. Second, is not rectifying it. And it grows to be to depression. Third, leads to death. So, depression always leads to death. If not your death, but death in some point of your life. You don't see things as you used to see them. You don't see people as you used to see people. So that person who's wronged you, for example. And then you find it draws you from the Lord. <laughs> if you're going to church, now you stop. If you are associating with people in, let's say, Bible studies, you stop. If you are in choir, you stop. So it draws Cain. Cain, Cain went away from God. And any time anyone walks away from God, it be it leads to that. Just it shows that that deprived nature. You begin to now, your life is being controlled by now your desires, your fleshly tendencies. It leads to. It leads you down, down. So Cain. Cain lay with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. It's true. Most of people do ask this question. Where did Cain get his wife? This point. <laughs> we know. Cain got the wife from uh, one of the daughters. Maybe one out of uh, Adam and Eve. But we know it was a close uh, cousin. It was a daughter out of the lineage, this lineage of Adam and Eve. You see, at this point, Adam and Eve have grown. And Adam and Eve had other children, not just Cain and Abel. They had other children. We will see it. So Cain gets this out of a relative, his relative. And it was accepted by them. See, even in the time of Abram married, Sarah was his close, close, close. It was like the sister. But let me not say even relative. The sister. So um, by then it was accepted. God accepted it. For people to replenish, you could marry your sister or close relative. Yeah. So uh, Cain begot Enoch. Cain was... Cain was then building a city and named it after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Arad. Arad, the father of Mehujael. And Mehujael was the father of Methushael. And Methushael was the father of Lamech. Now, as you said, as you said, every name portrays portrays it has a meaning every name has a meaning so uh, let's see these names here they're not just there for for uh, uh, to fill up the the scriptures so um okay cain begot now verse 17 again so cain begot enoch and cain begot enoch Cain was building a city and named it after his son Enoch. Now verse 18. To Enoch was born Arad. So Enoch means dedicated. Arad means a fugitive. So Enoch means dedicated. Dedicated. Arad means fugitive. Mehujael means blot out that Jehovah is God. Blot out that Jehovah is God. Like rub it off that Jehovah is God. Like say it not. Say it Jehovah is God. Say it not that Jehovah is God. Rub it. We know us as Christians Jehovah is God. We know it. But this one he says blot it out. Blot it out that Jehovah is God. That is Mehujael. Then Mehujael begot Methusael. 
it means they die of those who follow God. Now, let's see this road. Uh, after Cain was born, the mother said, Oh, this is this is a son. A son, even the Lord. He thought this was God. He thought this was the Messiah. But Cain wasn't the Messiah. Now, he begot, he begot after running away from the presence of the Lord, he begot Enoch. Enoch means dedicated. I read a fugitive. Fugitive, meaning now not accepted in the presence of the Lord. is now a fugitive. Then uh, I read because Mehujael blot out that Jehovah is God. Now we don't want to accept that Jehovah is God. Uh, is no longer is no longer part of us to follow Jehovah. We don't accept God now. He is not God. So, and then Mehujael be God's Methusael, they die of those who follow the Lord. Now there is now that um, uh, an accusation. It's, it's not right. It's not okay because anyone who follows God dies. So there is no need to follow God. They die of those who follow the Lord. It's like walking downstairs. These people are getting farther from the Lord. And then uh, Mehu, Methusael because Lamech. Lamech means poor and lowly. Poor and lowly. Now, let me read these names according to their meanings now. So it means dedicated, fugitive, blot out that Jehovah is God. They die of those who follow the Lord, poor and lowly. You see, to the other side, when we call or when we read those names, it means in our state, whenever anybody walks and says the end of everyone who doesn't accept the Lord or who says if there is no need to follow the Lord, always they die poor and lowly, meaning there is no next life for anyone who doesn't accept Christ. And people, again, if you've not accepted Christ, please, so easy. So that you should inherit the next life. You should not die poor and lowly. Amen. So the names has meaning. So when you see the names, always seek names in the scriptures, seek to find the meaning. And you'll find something extra being revealed in the word of God. Amen. So um, Lamech married two women named Ada. And the other was Zila. Now we said Genesis is the beginning, beginning of most of the things. Now we see the beginning of of polygamy. Yeah, this is the first mention. So again, from this, let's see the names, and then it will explain something in the context that first mention. So it says a god, uh, Enoch. Sorry, Lamech married two women, and named Ada, and the other was Zila. Now. The name Eda means an ornament, and Zila means cheap. Ornament is so good, a good thing that you desire. And then Zila uh, now comes, and she is cheap, worthless. The same way, uh, in that life, Lamech is poor and lowly. Poor and lowly marries ornament. And cheapness or worthless. At that state of polygamy, people will say there are some men of God who married uh, multiple women and all that. But we find also one point we never say when we argue with such point is, or when we bring them to the table is. The other side of the family, the pain it cost them that we see, we can always see presently. Any of those families, we always see there was some wrangling, some disagreements that are just portrayed from those stories. But those we never say. We just say, men of God, some married. But here's the thing. When this thing had grown later, then God brings now rules to, to control it. Not that it was in God's context at first that polygamy should be there. But in man's state, a fallen state, and because our God is the God of love, he accepts it. 
as man is going but it wasn't his original plan that man should marry many women not than but now he, he places regulation which we'll see later but we find when you marry or when you date <laughs> two ladies or ten or that one will always become so precious amongst them the others will be worthless but we won't tell them who is worthless amongst them you'll be using them as your time goes by and all that but it always turn out to be that you love one and hate the other so amen and then uh edda 20 edda gives back to jabal he was the father of those who live in tents and raise livestock now jabal uh, lived in tent and raised livestock the context is uh, he lived specifically to be excluded from other people just to raise livestock to be known like the, the, these are nomads we see at this point people they lived in a community ujama so people lived in, in societies people shared like most of the things but we now see this lineage this lineage of Cain as you're seeing it is a fallen state and things begins here polygamy begins in this state let us just notice that that I'm against polygamous but just saying what the scripture says so in that state polygamy begins and then people who select themselves now we have to be identified by li livestock we are the keepers of livestock people are just being now identified by the like career here now uh livestock his brother's name was jubal he was the father of all who play harps and flute those who play harp and flute the musicians his brother again in the context is those who played and made harps in in the context of uh, like commercializing commercializing it professionals in making music to one this or sing for this it begins in this state so musicians uh professional commercializing music it begins here now again so uh jubal up now 22 says zila had a son Tubal Cain who forgot who forged sorry Zila had his had a son Tubal Cain who forged all kinds of tools of bronze and iron Tubal Cain sister was Nama now Tubal Cain now forges weapon weapon begins making making of uh, like a smith it begins again here Tubal Cain now he could forge metals to build up things so uh lamek 23 lamek said to his wife ada and zila listen to me why so lamek hear my word i have killed a man of wounding me a young man for injuring me if cain is avenged seven times then lamek 70 seven times like seven 70 times seven times we see that uh, <laughs> this man again this um lamek he goes to the field and fights and there was some misunderstanding with certain man and then they fight notice at this time people have begun feeling the earth so he fights with the man and then he kills the man and then now he comes to use what god had told cain cain just killed his brother out of anger but now lamech says it turns what the lord says to to satisfy him he says now me i was trying to defend myself and now if god said anyone should not kill that then me I'll be protected 70 times 7 because I was just doing it to protect myself people listen to this let us not always turn the scriptures to fit our ways 
our fallen state ways. Don't use this scripture to try to make you feel comfortable while doing any kind of sin that you're involved in. You see, people always get drunk and they come say, Jesus drank wine and uh, Jesus and you see wine is uh, alcohol is okay and all that. And uh, not that I'm against it, but at times letters just always have the wisdom of God. How he speaks to you in your heart. How do you feel? You see, most of people, they just come out to use the scriptures to try to just fulfill their lustful tendencies and desires of the flesh. Let us always learn that God is so, so much loving and so much patient. He won't come and knock your head right there. But he will always speak to you. He will always speak to you, speak to you, to correct you out of your mistake. But it is a point that no man knows that God just says now is okay. Continue in your deprived state. Let us try not to read that point, people. Let us not try to always try and use the Bible or the word of God to make us continue doing evil. What the Lord desires is let us come to repentance. And as Christians, we have been set free. You can do anything. You can do anything. It's true. But not everything you do is good for you. You can drink gladiator. Is You are allowed as a Christian. But it's not good for you because immediately you die. So, people, not everything is expedient. Not everything is good for you. But you can, you can always do them. So, the Lord gives us that privilege, that liberty, to, to always stay out of them, like not to become under them. You have, the, you have the privilege not to be an alcoholic. You have a privilege not to be. The Lord gives you that ability not to be ruled. Like, let's say, an addict of pornography gives you that ability. You can always walk out of it. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And in our state, people, when you're struggling with a sin that you know is sin, when if it's not where people are, just speak it to the Lord. Lord, I don't like this in my life. And work something in my life, Lord, to take me out of this. Because you died for me. And no sin, Lord, is so much great that you cannot bring me out of. And you find God works. Every day you find if it's any kind of sin, pornography, watching it, you find every day it loses a taste in your life. But if you go on trying to justify what you're doing wrong, you find you live in that state like him. May God give us wisdom to always walk out of these addictions that we've seen have held us so strongly that we now find a way to justify them. May the Lord give us wisdom. Wisdom. And I pray, brothers and sisters, nothing, nothing, any kind of addiction, any kind of sin. You see, the thing is, there is a sin I'm struggling with, and there is a sin you're struggling with. Such, let us present them to the Lord. And not try to justify them in the scriptures to make it sound good. I'll be avenged 77 times. So, yes, God help us. So, uh, Adam, 25, Adam lay with his wife again and she gave birth to a son named Seth, saying, God has granted me another, another child in place of Abel since Cain killed him. Seth also had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, Men began to call on the name of the Lord. Now this is the second generation, the second lineage now, Seth. And we find Seth gives birth to Enos. Enos. And then at this time now people, that lineage began calling themselves with the Lord. They began identifying themselves with the Lord, people. Let me tell you something. 
your career what you've learned in college or university or anywhere that that career as a christian let that not really define you don't find so much pleasure standing and identifying yourself with that that thing you learn you see that is in the nature of that first generation they could identify we are iron smith we are musicians here we are identify let the core thing the let your thing be god and not your career you see out of pride you always think if you are called an engineer or a doctor is so much so great that when you want to preach and you begin saying yes i'm a doctor now people get it so well and we've grown in that tendency that some places you have to be such big names for it to be allowed here is the thing it's all foolishness that is the world's way of doing things that, that is the truth Let us always identify ourselves with the Lord. You see, in God there is all kinds of wisdom. Wisdom, in any way, He gives wisdom that no school can ever provide. Wisdom and understandings no one can ever understand. So here's the thing: let us not identify ourselves. Yeah, those are careers, but let's say yes, Lord, thank you for this. This is just forgetting. Uh, for keeping me lord in this life because i need to get something but let us not make it a big deal that we identify ourselves anyway among brothers and sisters believers about them but let us identify ourselves with christ we are saved we are born again and don't be afraid to speak it out most believers you will never know they never speak about it because they fear they will be laughed at don't 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 be ashamed grow out of it and begin identifying yourself as this lineage with the lord let god be your thing and god bless you so much our brothers and sisters if i've stepped on any toe may forgive me and uh, may the lord help us so father we thank you for your goodness Thank you so much Lord you are you are so good Lord Lord to anyone undergoing any kind of addiction or job and tendencies of sin that seems to stick so much oh Lord Lord we pray that may your spirit Lord speak and Lord manifest itself in our lives to make us Jehovah just go to our knees and repent and Lord if there is any point we are depressed because of holding things against other people who've done us indeed wrong lord give us a heart to forgive thank you lord i know lord your scriptures indeed are impacting people you reach us even to the deepest of our soul we thank you receive all the glory in jesus name amen god bless you till we meet again in jesus name